Welcome back to Sparks of Joy Studio. This is Natalie and in today's video I'm going to be working on a variety of projects. Basically my goal is to finish as many projects as I can because I have a very special announcement for you at the end of today's video. So stick around and let's get started so we can see how I upcycled and flipped all of these beautiful treasures. For our first project, I have this beautiful, rusty, crusty old lamp base that I got at the Goodwill Outlet bins. It was extremely heavy, so I think I paid a little bit more than I probably should have or would have otherwise, but we're going to actually use this in a different way in today's video. I'm using some pliers and I'm trying really hard to take this base apart. I wanted to I wanted to see how many pieces I could get it into because I'm going to be using it in a different way than as a lamp. It took a long time. I had to go off video, but here is a look at all the pieces that I have from this lamp base. I mean, come on. You couldn't make better rusty and crusty items if you tried. Now before I show you how I styled some of those pieces that I had gotten from that lamp, I have this handmade shelf. It's very clear that it was handmade because it was not even. There was extra holes places that hadn't been filled in, but that's okay with me because I'm really going for a very prim primitive and rustic look. I am now what I'm going to do is first take off of the, those doors that you see there and then it looks like there's some pieces in the middle where maybe another door was or I'm not exactly sure what it was but anyway I'm taking off those and then I'm taking off I don't know if you can see it from this angle but there was another piece that was on the back of this that was also like had that heart cut out shape and I'm assuming it was either used just either for decoration or to hang the piece I don't need any of those in what we're gonna do with this little mini shelf. I removed the shelves, which were also screwed in, and then I gave the entire piece a quick coat of Liquid Patina's Dark and Decrepit. That's a DIY Liquid Patina. Once I was finished with that, I started to think about what I could do to um, the background of the shelf. I ended up deciding to use some old paper and decoupage it on. And somehow I thought I had hit record and I didn't. So what you guys are gonna end up seeing is just the finished project, which I'm so sad about because I worked really hard to um, film that part that I didn't know wasn't filming. So let's take a look at what it looks like once all of those pieces are decoupaged on. Now I'm taking various uh, transfers of bugs. Mainly, I think I ended up having two bees and then I had that little butterfly, which I ended up changing to a moth a little bit later in this project. But I, these bees and uh, the moth, I believe, come from the brocante transfer by IOD. And then those two pieces in the middle are from a different uh, transfer set that I got off of Amazon. So I'm making sure that I'm putting these transfers on where they will not be covered up in any way by the shelves when they go back in. And I'm using those lines that you see across the side um, as my markers to make sure where I place them. Once that's done, I screw back in the two shelves that um, I had taken off. And then I'm gonna show you the final reveal with both those rusted brass pieces from that lamp styled inside of this shelf. Before I show you the finished project, I do want to mention that I took a sealer. I actually used a decoupage matte sealer, which also offers that finished look. And I am going to be sealing all of the pieces just to hold that rust in and keep it as is.
For our next project, I have a bunch of ball jars that I have collected over the course of the last year or so, and I am going to be painting all of them in the fusion color called Carriage House. I believe this was one of the newest paint colors that was released last summer. Um, it's the first time I've tried it. It actually came in one of um, Julie's Colors of the Month Club, and I'm really excited with it. It kind of gives me a shabby, chic kind of green vibe, so that's kind of where I took this, although I'm not really a shabby, chic kind of artist, so we'll see if I did it justice. My original plan was to take these tags that I had previously um, made using some decoupage paper. It was Roy Cycled's, I believe, catalog. Uh, it, it basically, it's this large um, decoupage paper with all of her, a variety of her decoupage papers made into tiny little blocks. Um, I absolutely love it. And so I had put three different pieces of that paper onto these tags and then added on these beads that I had did a paint wash on in white and a, a green color that actually resembles the carriage house color. I took some twine and wrapped it around the uh, rim of, the, of each of the bottles and then I took some scrap uh, lace as well as those that canvas or that um, drop cloth kind of material were actually the ties on the back of um, these seat cushions that I had that were on a set of chairs that I had thrifted for my kitchen and I got rid of the chairs but I kept those backs and here's what it looks like all finished up. I ended up not adding on the tags because I felt like they were really big for the um, jars but you'll be able to see what they look like together I feel like the colors are beautiful I just don't know how I would style them so I do plan to sell them together though you would get a tag with a ball jar um, in my shop next I have this adorable small jewelry box that I had gotten for a little under three dollars at the thrift store the other day and I really liked the entire piece I just wanted to paint it. I'm not a huge fan of the yellowy wood color, but I wanted to paint it in a more delicate tone because you can't see it on camera, but that glass that's in the middle has these beautiful um, etched in little dainty flowers. And I thought that was so pretty. So I'm going to leave that as is, but paint around it and give it more of a delicate vibe. I'm sure you can tell I started with a minty green color, but I ended up settling on this beautiful, very, very light pink called Peony by Fusion. And I went and painted, I believe I ended up painting three coats on the entire piece. Once that was done and dry, I ended up removing the glass from the inside of the jewelry box so that I could clean it up. I wanted to get any of the paint that I had gotten on. I tried to use a little scraper, but that was a very tiny space and I figured it would be much easier to just take it out and clean it completely and thoroughly and then replace it. Again, I did all of that after the paint was completed and dried. I then took a 20, 220 grit sandpaper and lightly distressed around the edges of the box, both around the top as well as on the sides. I used the IOD stamp called Kindest Regards and I placed that lettering around the box in random places. I was actually able to use the signature part of this lovely letter that creates this stamp, I think for probably the first time because I tend to use just the middle. But on the front side of the box, I was able to fit that text perfectly. I then took various transfers that I had in my stash. They were from so many different um, transfer sets. Some from IOD, I believe some were from Redesign um, with Prima. But I just found different places to place them around the box just to add a pop of color and a little bit of uniqueness to the story box. I do want to mention that those roses and one of the stamps on the top 
came from the IOD transfer set called Antiquities. One of the content creators that I watch asked the other day, what would be something that you would never skip out on or you know you would always pick up if you saw it at the thrift store and caddies and boxes are definitely my Achilles heel when it comes to um, thrifting. I found this at the Goodwill Outlet Bins and I am painting it in the color Homestead Blue. This is my first time using this color and I really like it. I do feel that it has a very um, traditional and primitive vibe to it and I feel like it would look great with a muted red for any Americana decor that you would create. So definitely recommended and I will say that I know it is available and in stock at Belfont Vintage where I do get my paint. I gave the inside and outside of this caddy two coats of that paint, let it dry, and now on to the fun part. I am taking a variety of stamps. This is one, the top left is the one of the stamps from the Antiquities set, and then the bottom right is from the Winter Adornment set. Both are from IOD and I am using IOD's white ink to stamp them onto our piece. I only did the front of the box using these two stamps and then you're going to see what I do to the sides very shortly. Now I'm coming in with some stamps from the veranda IOD stamp set. This is one of the new 2024 releases and I am starting by stamping a, one of the a bundle of roses uh, stamps that they have in that set and then I'm going to be using a mask to cover this stamp so that I can place another stamp on top and make it look like it's the background on this part of the box. So I finish that up and then I'm going to take the uh, crisscross pattern. Is that called a lattice? I don't remember. Anyway, I'm going to be taking that pattern and putting it on the, uh, stamping it on top of this part after I place the mask on the roses. Now I have that mask down and I am going to be stamping on that pattern. Watch how this comes out. Look how beautiful that looks. I do both sides of the box the same way. Catch this on camera, but you'll see here that I ended up taking the stamp pad with that white ink and very gently tapping it on the edges of the box all over the, and also on the handle. One thing I did not do is the other side of the box because I'm not sure what to put there. So please leave a comment below. Let me know what you would suggest I do with the last side of this box. Next, I have this napkin holder. I actually liked this blue color, but because of that greasy um, pencil that puts on the price as well as just some other smudges that were on this piece. I did end up painting it. I used a custom color with the Sun Kissed by Dixie Bell. It's a silk all-in-one mineral paint mixed with just a touch of Jitterbug by Country Cheek Chalk Paint. I used the same color in one of my DIYs over the weekend um, with those coastal uh, decor pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this entire piece uh, including the bottom, with two coats of this paint. Now I'm taking this transfer from the either Ephemeral Merlange or Seeds transfer set. I honestly can't remember. Um, and I am going to be cutting the text off of the bottom of that. Not for any other reason than the way that I'm going to be placing this on the napkin holder. I if I did it that way, it would end up with the text upside down. So my goal is to put half of this transfer on one side and the other half on the other side. Even though I used an all-in-one paint, I will need to seal the transfers and 
because I'm doing that, I just went ahead and sealed up the entire piece just to make it all even. I'm using a polyacrylic, this is Minwax Polyacrylic Sealer in a clear matte finish. Once the paint and the sealer have cured, um, it will be able to be a napkin holder, but I also wanted to show you how I styled this if it was going to be used as a decor piece. Next I have this little box that I had gotten from the Goodwill bins, and I'm going to be starting by placing four knobs on the bottom to make feet. I am using a wood glue. I believe I'm going to be using Tight Bond Quick and Thick for this project. I let that dry overnight and now I'm taking Coal Black by Fusion and painting the entire box, including the legs in this color. I believe I left the inside of the box not painted in this part of the project. Once that was dry, I came back in with White Swan by DIY, and my original plan was to paint this on and then distress it back using the wet distress method. But when I did that, it ended up not distressing the way that I wanted it to. Instead, it created a very cloudy, grayish color on the entire box. So I had to scrap the idea, and I ended up painting any part that was white. I painted it in Lamp White by Fusion. Now I'm coming in with Le Courier Stamp by IOD, and I'm going to be stamping different parts of this large stamp across the outside of the box. Once that was done, I came back in with Cast Iron by Fusion, and I painted the inside of the box and then the knobs um, that created the feet of the box. And as I continued, I completely forgot to catch this on camera, but I ended up transferring on some leftover bug and butterfly transfers that I have. And here's a look at our finished project. I even got one of the big moths from the Burkant transfer on the inside of this box. Okay, this next project is a funny one because I've had this wooden tray for a long time. I can't remember where I got it from. It was at least a, at least a month or two ago I got it. It has been painted a few different colors. Um, and then my children ended up stealing it one day to play restaurant. And I didn't see it for a while and then found it in their stash of stuff, their play kitchen. So I got it back and I am coming in with this um, cork that I had gotten from Dollar Tree a year or two ago and I have never used it and so I'm curious to see how this works out. I'm Right now all I'm trying to do is cut it down so it fits on the inside of that tray and it does have a, a sticky seal on the or um, a sticky film on the back of it to seal it in. It's like a peel and stick and I'm gonna try it out without using anything else just to see how long it stays on there. It does seem to be pretty durable. Um, once I get that placed down, I do end up painting the outside of the um, bot or the tray, I'm sorry, with the color Carriage House by Fusion. Once that was painted twice and dried, I did distress back some of the paint and then I sealed it with an antiquing glaze. Here's a look at the finished project for now, but I would love your opinion on what I should do with this. Should I leave it as a tray? Should I put some uh, hangers on the back and make it a wall hook or a wall hanger so that I can put hooks on it? What should I do with it? Leave a comment below and let me know. Next up, we're heading outside with my brand new paint sprayer. I have this paper towel holder that I thrifted. It was just under $4. And I'm gonna try this out with a white spray paint. I figured that was the easiest thing to do. I go ahead and get it started and it is not working. I am so frustrated trying to figure this out. So I had to go off camera and mess around with this a little bit to figure out what I did. I was able to get this to work and I came in and I sprayed all of this um, 
paper towel holder, which I'm actually going to be repurposing into a piece of decor. And I sprayed it with two coats of this white chalk paint. I let it dry and then I just came in with a another uh, all-in-one paint. It's Picket Fence by Fusion, just to touch up where there was some bleed through. I will say I absolutely love this paint sprayer. It was... I figured it out. I'm not sure what I did wrong at first, but I will leave a link um, to this in the description box below. I did get it off Amazon and it was for the amount that I paid. It was a really good buy. I was at Michael's shopping for my daughter's birthday. I actually found this adorable little bird. It was in the clearance section and I think it was originally $10. I got it for 99 cents. <laughs> I am starting by painting it in Heirloom by Fusion, but that blue came out a little bit too um, bright, I guess, or, or too, um, too much of a contrast for what I was looking for. So I ended up in the end painting it with Newell by Fusion. I also found this adorable little frog when I was thrifting. Um, it was just under $3, $2.92, and I am going to paint it with the color Lichen by Fusion. I give it two coats, and then I use some grunge gray wax by Dixie Bell, as well as some DIY black wax to bring out all of those details that you see. I thought it was so cute how it has almost like a leaf kind of textured feel to it. Um, and it really, it looks amazing. So you're going to get to see all of these things in the final reveal coming up very shortly. Next up, I have this sign that I found. It has this shiplock kind of um, texture to it. And I tried to sand off as much of that text as I could. I, it's not, um, it looks like it was burned in, but it's not. It was painted on. I got as much as I could off, and then I kind of just was like, all right, we're just going to paint over it. I um, am coming in and I'm going to be painting it with, I think it ended up taking three coats of Lamp White by Fusion. Now I'm taking these stamps from the Mercantile Stamp Set by IOD. It is one of their new 2024 release stamps, and I am going to be stamping it onto this piece. My goal here is to go with a very farmhouse touch. I was going to go coastal, but we did that the other day. So today I'm going to focus on more of that farmhouse quality for this piece. I did want to use some of the grain stamps, but I actually chose a stamp from the Harvest stamp set by IOD. I just liked the style of it and the fact that it, instead of being straight, it kind of had a little bit of a curve to it. And I thought that looked good in this spot on the, um, on the wood round. To help things look a little bit even, I used that 1879 stamp from the Mercantile stamp set on the other side to balance the text and the graphics that are on this piece. I ended up screwing in um, two hooks across the top and then I put a clip where you see that cork and you'll be able to see what that looks like all finished up and hung on my wall. For our next project, I'm taking those two doors that we had unscrewed from that shelf that was earlier in this video, and I am painting it with a coat of Liquid Patina Dark and Decrepid just to seal in that paint and um, make the wood look a little bit more finished. 
Now, I was originally thinking of screwing it back together to almost make it look like a um, shelf sitter, like photo, um, two photo frames that are connected. I don't know. They're, they're very popular, I know. Um, but I ended up going in a different direction with this project. I decided to turn these pieces of wood into a floral pocket. So what you see me doing now is I'm taking some hot glue and I am gluing on some drop cloth that I cut out and wrapping it all the way around the piece. So once I have this part of the piece um, glued on, I'm gonna turn it around, glue it on just a dot on the edges on each of the hearts and then wrap it back around and glue the drop cloth pieces together at the back. I did choose pieces of the drop cloth where that stitched part, like the border of the drop cloth was there just to keep it from fraying. But I am going to allow the base and the side that hangs off the edge, I am gonna allow those to fray. Um, I do think that gives it a little bit of a more unique quality, I guess, um, than if it was all stitched and perfect all the way around the, um, the floral pocket. Now I'm taking some small eye hooks and screwing them into either side of the top of the uh, wood so that I can put a hanger on them. I also put some stamps on the front as an embellishment, and here's a look at the finished project. For our next project, I have some other treasures that I found at the Goodwill Outlet Bins. I found some pieces to a chess set. I wasn't able to find the full set, although I was hoping for it because my son loves to play chess. And I found this tiled frame, this framed tile, sorry, that I believe was also like a hot plate where you would put like your plates um, when you bring them out for dinner. So I am starting by taking some tight bond quick and thick, and I am going to be using these four pawns as the feet to a, what will be a riser. I'm gonna take some coal black by Fusion and I'm going to be painting the entire piece minus the feet that are already black in this color. Once that was dry, I decided to switch things up from my original plan and now I'm gonna be coming in and painting the middle tile in the color Lamp White by Fusion. I then also did a very light dry brush across the frame of the piece just to help it look a little bit cohesive and not such a stark difference between the middle and the frame. Once that paint was dry, I'm coming in with the Le Courier stamp by IOD and I'm going to be stamping the middle of the piece with a, a random part of this stamp. I do love this stamp because you can use it as a background in so many different ways using different pieces of the stamp. They are individual, just so you know. You can pull off just parts of it, but I, do, I like to use it as like a background. Now I'm taking this sheep transfer from the brocante transfer set, I believe, and I am transferring it in the middle of this tile. As I was rubbing it on, there are some pieces of paint that chipped off, but I'm gonna show you in a minute how I handle it. Like you can see right now, as I'm trying to pick up the transfer sheet, um, I accidentally chipped it with my nail. So I'm gonna fix that. So I will show you that in a second. I'm taking my black ink pad and I am just using the corner of it to dab right on top of the chips that um, were created from my nail or from the transfer stick and just to give it a little bit more of that age. It already looks like the style of that newspaper already looks like it's a little bit grungy and different. I feel like this just added to the character of it and doesn't look like it was a mistake that I was trying to cover up. At least that's my opinion. I would love to know yours. Once the ink was fully dry, I sealed everything up with a polyacrylic sealer and here's a look at the finished project. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I think we made it to the final project of this video. This is a, a jewelry box that I found. It um, did not have that middle top box. I have an idea for it, but for right now, what we're gonna do is remove the drawers and we are gonna work on painting it. I did start by painting this with a fusion paint. It was very cumbersome to paint and I wanted to paint the inside. So I actually took it outside and sprayed it with that white paint that I had in my paint. I did not get a clip of me spraying the base of the jewelry box, but I did um, catch this. So I am painting the drawers in Newell by Fusion. Now I'm going to be using some of Roy Seifold's decoupage paper. I am trying to find the best spot to cover this top of the jewelry box. And once I find that, then I'm going to start decoupaging it on. I do use liquid patina, the clear liquid patina as my decoupage medium. And I find that it is the best, in my opinion, at ensuring no wrinkles and really just creating a smooth and very, um, I, I don't know, a perfect finish. Now, I here I am coming in with the liquid patina and I think I ended up doing the entire top of the box um, because it is a smaller space. Oh, nope, I lied. I am just um, coming in with the top. So here's my starter strip. I just don't know why I went from the top down instead of from the left to the right, but that's okay. Um, and I am laying that on. I did spritz this decoupage paper very lightly with some water, and that also helps with the wrinkles. And now I'm just smoothing it down and trying to very gently pull off the, pull out those wrinkles. Um, one of the things that's great about the liquid patina, it doesn't dry very quickly. And that with the water allows you to very gently pick up the decoupage paper and kind of lay it down again to offer that um, more clean, smooth finish. I also really like that when you're using the water, it helps you kind of like pull the paper gently, do not rip, um, so that you can get it to really adhere to the piece and not look like it was something that was glued on. I mean, when you see this finished product, it, it's amazing. It really impresses me how gorgeous um, it comes out. I also decoupage the sides of this box um, using different parts of that same paper. I will leave a link below or I'll leave the name of it below in the description box. And once everything was dry, I very gently sanded off the edges so that it would create that clean look and sealed all of the decoupage paper in with two coats of the liquid patina. Here's our final project. My original plan was to place a book inside to decorate and hide that open space where the other drawers were not available, but it didn't look right. So I would love to know, please let me know in the comments, what would you suggest I do to either finish this piece or to decorate it and um, hide the, the open space? And now for the big surprise. I am offering 30% off from today through the 31st of May. Make sure you check out my website, all of these products, as well as other upcycled and DIY items will be available at that discount. No code needed. All of the discounts will be automatically applied at checkout. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you soon.